Hi everyone and welcome to another video from DisparityPair.com. In this video we'll be talking about something that is seriously neglected anytime you have an electrical problem on your car and that is the ground connection. What is the ground connection? What are the symptoms of a bad ground connection and how to perhaps solve the problem you can see uh, in this video. So stay tuned. DisparityPair.com Now, what is a ground connection anyway? The ground connection on your car is the connection from the minus battery terminal to the car body and from the car body to the engine. Why is the ground connection so important? Well, the electric system on your car functions properly, functions when there is a closed loop from plus to minus. In that loop is every electric uh, system, appliance and everything else. So when the ground connection is bad or there is a weak contact somewhere in the system, that causes an interference in that loop and you'll experience problems. One of the most common symptoms of a bad ground connection is heavy cranking. So when you turn the key, and I'm sorry there's no other way for me to show this at this moment, so you turn the key and the cranking goes like whoa, 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 then there may be a bad ground connection. Uh, the main problem here is recognizing that you have a problem like this as the symptoms are very similar uh, to when you have a bad car battery or a bad starter. So before you uh, go and spend a lot of money on either buying a new car battery or repairing the car starter, check the ground connection. Another symptom is low alternator voltage output. Uh, if there's a bad ground connection somewhere on the car, then the alternator won't be able to perform its task properly. Instead of the 14.2 to 14.5 volts, which is normal, the voltage output will be much lower. If you don't know how to check the alternator voltage output on your car, I will leave a link so you can watch a separate video on that topic. One more symptom that you may experience is flickering lights. Now, we mentioned the uh, alternator, and if there's a bad ground connection, it won't be able to perform its task properly. When that's the case, there is a fluctuation in the voltage output, causing the flickering lights. If your car won't start in terms that it will crank, but it won't start, the ground connection is worth uh, checking. This is a rare case, but if there is a bad ground connection, it may well interfere with the ignition system. This will prevent the car from starting and besides that it may cause even a misfire. And for the last symptom on this list, electronic glitches. Uh, by glitches I mean weird symptoms with your electrics and electronics. Like when you press the brake, the whole uh, rear lamp lights up uh, dashboard warning lights coming up in clusters for no obvious reason. You may uh, turn the blower inside the cabin and the power window goes down and so on. Now, when this happens, uh, most people tend to change a lot of spare parts, spend a lot of money only for the outcome to be the same and not even checking the ground connection at all. When this happens, always check the ground connection first, especially if you get symptoms like if you turn the, as I mentioned, uh, you turn the blower and the power window comes down. You see, uh, electric and electronic glitches have sort of a pattern when they don't work properly. If you turn the uh, blower on and, you know, it doesn't work properly, it's, uh, it doesn't work at all or so on, then probably you have a problem with the blower itself or with the fuse or something like that. But if you turn on the blower and the power window comes down, for instance, then you should check the ground connection. Now, the first way to check if you have a bad ground connection is using a multimeter. This is the most popular method. Now, what are you supposed to do? First, set the multimeter to 20 volts, direct current, okay, like if you're checking an alternator voltage output, and do the next. I hope 
hope you can see this use the testers and check the voltage on the battery it's i hope you can see this it's 12.06 volts after that take the minus tester and put it on the minus connection here and if everything is okay the voltage should be the same okay it's 12.06 exactly the same as when the tester was on the battery terminal and with this you can see that the car body is properly grounded next step put the tester on a metal surface on the engine we're gonna put it here can't see this because there is the engine cover here but we put it on a metal surface on the engine and it is 12.06 volts exactly the same so with this we can see that the engine is properly grounded again if the voltage is the same on the battery and when you put the minus tester onto the uh, car body and the car engine and if the voltage is the same then this means that the ground connection is good if the voltage is lower then you have a ground connection problem next method is visual inspection now in this case it would be good for you to know where all the ground connections are on your car in case of the skoda which we are showing this on there is one ground connection here okay so it's easy to access and uh, you can take a look if it's rusty and if it's not clean you take this nut off here take everything off and clean it properly now have in mind that uh, unlike the skoda a lot of cars have a ground connection between the car body and the engine it's mostly located here uh, somewhere near the gearbox it's called a ground strap it's a thick piece of uh, copper wiring which has two connections on each side so it can be screwed to the car body and to the transmission uh, this is also a major point for checking if it's rusty uh, take it off uh, clean it and return it back into place now these two places are uh, the major ground connections other ground connections which are also important may be located on the firewall are located inside the passenger cabin under the plastic trimming or in the boot if you have those electronic glitches that we've mentioned it may well be uh, due to a ground connection inside the passenger cabin or in the boot for instance uh, in this case it would be good uh, to know where all the ground connections are located search uh, in the car manual or google it uh, you should find where every ground connection point is if you see that this is the problem then take off the the ground connections are usually held in place with a nut or a screw take them off clean everything until it's nice and shiny and return everything into place uh, one more thing you should uh, look at are the connectors on the wiring installation for instance if you have that a uh, problem where everything shines up in the rear lamp when you press the brake pedal for instance you press the brake pedal the uh, turning lights come up the position light comes up and so on then check the connector on the lamp moist tends to get inside and uh, it can cause rust and weak contact and this will cause a weak ground connection also check the connectors uh, along the wiring installation they can also cause problems And for the last method for seeing if you have a bad uh, ground connection is using a jumper cable. This method is a bit crude but nevertheless is very effective. What you do if you think that you have a bad ground connection is put one clamp on the minus battery terminal and the other clamp on a clean metal surface somewhere on the car body or on the engine. This way you're essentially bypassing all of the ground connections on the car and if you see that the problem is gone then uh, you should know that you should check all of the ground connections. This goes especially for heavy cranking. If you think that you have a bad ground connection then just connect it to the minus battery terminal and directly 
onto the engine. If the car starts without any problems, you know where you should search for the problem. Needless to say that if you're gonna put the uh, jumper cable somewhere on the car body, don't put it somewhere on the electronic parts like on the ECU here or somewhere else. Uh, search for a nice uh, screw or some clean surface so you, uh, you don't damage anything. The solution to a ground connection problem is very simple. As you probably concluded, the bigger task is finding uh, where the actual bad connection is. The repair consists of taking off the bad connection and cleaning it or replacing it. In case of the two major connections, the ones that go from the battery to the car body and from the car body to the engine, you'll mostly find, as mentioned, screws or nuts like uh, this one. Simply take them off, uh, take off this cable or a strap that may be located between the car body and the engine, take them off and simply clean them. Uh, also check that the minus battery terminal and clamp is uh, cleaned and properly tightened. Uh, once you clean everything, just return everything into place and properly tighten. Besides uh, cleaning, check that these two major uh, ground connection points uh, don't have any damage on them. If you see that the cable or ground strap is uh, torn or weakened in any way, uh, best replace them uh, as soon as possible. Uh, regarding the uh, wiring installation, if you see that any of the ground connections are rusty or that a wire is broken, just you know take off the uh, ground connection. Uh, clean everything until it's nice and shiny and return everything back and properly tighten. If the cable is broken, of course, replace it. Uh, regarding connectors for like the rear lamps, which I've uh, mentioned, uh, check that they're clean. If there's any rust, use some contact spray and clean them. Also check the connectors that are located lower on the wiring installation. And for a brief recap on the ground connection problem. Before going out and spending a ton of money on a new car battery, on uh, new car starters, alternators, or on new uh, electronic components that are mostly expensive, check the ground connections first. It may uh, be the cause of your problems. In order to do this properly, know where all the ground connections on your car are located. If you see that the ground connections are the problem, be sure to clean them, replace them if needed, and properly return them into place and tighten. It's definitely a DIY job. As you've seen, you can do it on your own. Take off a few nuts or screws, clean everything, and return into place. So that's it for this time. I hope this video helps. Uh, please like and subscribe. It's a huge help for what we're doing. Also, if you find the time, visit us at our website, disparerepair.com, where you can find more useful car and driving tips. Thanks for your time.